O kia ora tātai, a himihi tuatai ki tō tātou nei whanaunga, a te ate awa, a tarana ki whanui, a tēnei te mihi ki a koutou, a ki a kui te tuahine a, mō tō a, mihi ki au, a tēnei te mihi ki a kui e kei mari, a ki a taku whanaunga, Fontaine, a tēnei te mihi ki a kui, Fontaine and I quickly caught up this morning and I said to Fontaine, I'm not sharing any ideas with you because you're going before me and you might steal the, my awesome one-liners. Um, but, you know, it's really important for me to acknowledge uh, my whānau from down here in Te Atiawa and also to acknowledge uh, my colleagues um, because that's one of our customs, our traditions, is to show manaki but also to acknowledge those around you who support you. Um, and that's going to be a little bit of my kōrero today around some of the concepts, some of the principles and the values we as Māori entities incorporate into our decision making. Um, and they span from kōrero uh, tawhito, you know, the, the words of our tūpuna, with the aspirations for our tamariki mokupuna who are yet to be born. Um, so just really wanted to take that moment to acknowledge uh, those in the room. Um, Marongo ka mōhio, mā te mōhio ka marama. Mā te marama ka mātou, mā te mātou ka ora. From listening comes knowledge, from knowledge comes understanding, from understanding comes wisdom, from wisdom comes well-being. So within that whakatauki from our tūpuna, it talks about the importance of gathering information, sharing information, using that information to make decisions. And ultimately with that aspiration that you will bring well-being to those that you serve. And so the, the kaupapa that I've been asked to talk about, na po or te kawa ora, is all about, you know, what does a new way of reporting for our entities look like moving into the future? So, you know, I've had the privilege I'm calling it the privilege, last 20 years of being a bean counter. Um, but I challenged myself 15 years ago, early in my career, when I was looking at the information that we were sharing with our Māori communities. First thing, they had very low levels of financial literacy. All they looked at is, did we make money? Without the, but what they were more interested in is, is what impact did us making that money have on all the things that are important to us and why don't we share those stories? So for me, reporting is about sharing that kōrero, sharing that holistic story. And as Māori, we are great storytellers. We just sometimes got to put a little bit of Q&A and some checks and balances around the, especially what our uncles, stories that our uncles tell, you know, like fishing stories. Because ultimately, through sharing those stories, you transfer knowledge. You transfer that whakapapa um, to those within the room, within generations. But ultimately for me, it is about being accountable for your actions. To those who have passed and those who are yet to come. And then I'll come back to that kōrero at, at the end of my presentation. So when I think of, you know, so what do I see as the opportunity in introducing a, a Māori perspective into the reporting framework? And I, I have four concepts or four ideas of what that may look like. Um, and again, they all stem from kōrero uh, tawhito, you know, the wisdom of our tūpuna. The first one is around whakapapa. It's the one thing that all Māori have, uh, that we all acknowledge, and it has, it has passed from generation to generation, and it is enduring. It is an enduring legacy, it is an enduring conversation, it is an enduring connection. And when you have that depth of connection, it comes with a whole lot of responsibility and obligations. Um, so that's one thing that I would like to see in our reporting, in our organisations, um, is actually what is the legacy that you are creating and leaving behind, and how deep is that legacy. So as Māori entities, it's easy for us because all of our entities and our kaupapa is built on whakapapa and acknowledging that past, today, and the future. When I think about nā pau or te kawa ora, so behind every Māori word, there is a meaning, there is a story, 
It is not simply a title. Um, and when we came up with Ngā Pau or Te Kawa Ora, there was a few wānanga, there was a few sessions of actually what is an appropriate word and how do we bring real meaning and substance to that, to those words. So Ngā Pau or Te Kawa Ora represents the pillars that imbue life. And everyone's going, how does that have, what does that have to do with reporting? Well, actually, for me, it's, it's the fundamental acknowledgement that the activities of our entities are interconnected and interdependent. So again, that's another kaupapa as Māori, that we acknowledge that we are part of an ecosystem, not just he tangata, not just people ecosystem, but the connection we have with the environment, the connection we have with the spiritual realm and the realm of our tūpuna, the acknowledgement of where we are in the continuum of a journey. It's taking that holistic sense of actually all of these things need to work in sync if we're to create a level of harmony. So it's very relational. So for me, that's why you know, the title of the work that we're doing is so important, because it is about acknowledging those relational elements and how they all intersect, interplay, but are interconnected. Which leads me on to our sort of the next um, kaupapa, and the word is kaupapa, because all of our organisations, one of the first questions I always ask is what is our purpose? And what is the depth behind why our entities exist? And you know, I've challenged some of our Māori leadership around, wouldn't it be wonderful one day when our whānau are no longer dependent on our entities for them to live mana motuhaki, te nō ranga tiratanga? That, you know, ensuring that we don't create another system of um, reliance. Now, whānau look to our entities to support them for them to have a, a better future. How do we change the philosophy of our entry, entities as being an enabler, as being able to ensure access to opportunities they might not otherwise have, versus becoming the centre of their world? So, for me, it's having a deep conversation around what is the purpose of all of our entities. Um, and with that purpose comes a whole lot of obligations and responsibilities. I live and breathe that every day. You know, everyone knows, knows that I'm the money man. So everyone loves me at an AGM or hates me. So either I'm giving them something they want or I'm not. Um, you know, that job for me doesn't start and doesn't, doesn't start and stop nine to five. I can be at the supermarket. I can be going for a walk with my dog and I'll run into my aunties, uncles, cousins, and they'll go, well, good to see you, I've got a question. You know, so for me, that responsibility and obligation of living and breathing the purpose of our organisations is 24 seven, uh, because I'm part of a community. Um, so you know, that brings the depth and substance in my life for why our entities exist and why understanding purpose is so important. But also what comes with that, um, and in my last role at Paranini Hiki Wai Tōtara, I, was, I had the, you know, the fortunate um, position of being called Te Rau Mā Horohora. And so Mā Horohora is about having the um, responsibility to distribute resource to support kaupapa. But with that comes the importance of being able to balance. Balance what we do, when we do it, how we do it, and how we uh, consciously share the stories around how we're making those balancing decisions. So I think that's also part of determining purpose, is how are you making active decisions around the balancing act? Because if I had endless money, it would be all good. Last thing for me is around mana. And mana is about impact. Key thing with mana, mana is reciprocal. So you can earn mana and mana can be taken away. So it's understanding that what you do and don't do has an impact on mana. What you do to others, what do you do to other things, also can enhance or detract from mana. So again, when I think about some of the industries that Māori are in, you know, it's the mana o, mana o te wai, mana o te whenua, mana o te tangata. We cannot enhance our own mana if we're diminishing the mana of other parts of the system ecosystem. So it's acknowledging that, again, that interconnectedness, that interdependency. Mana is only enhanced across the realm 
not just by one component. So I'm always, I always get challenged by our, um, our old people and who are very practical. They're really, really practical. You know, statistics, science tells us the waterways are good to drink, swim in. But moko, I can no longer keep, uh, collect kaimoana because the kaimoana is gone. How we enhance the, the mana of our awa. So it's those subtle reminders for me that go actually our mana has been enhanced by an extractive or exploitative approach. So how do we restore the mana of those components of our, our system? And it is also, therefore it leads me to actually to have mana, you have to be thinking about the collective good. Um, and so the you know, advantage of Māori entities is we are collectively owned. We have to think about the collective because that's who we serve, no one individual. And our whānau expect us to be thinking about the collective of the ecosystem, not just he era tangata, the realm of man. And so for me, then I start to think about actually the balancing act between tangata, taio, whānau and wairua. Now the reason that, uh, you know, again, why we are looking to introduce uh, you know, uh, an indigenous uh, Māori perspective to this reporting framework is to acknowledge that there are realms that are seen and unseen. Um, therefore, actually in Māori sense, we don't exist without acknowledging wairua. Um, and because it's a fundamental part, again, of that corridor and that intergenerational transfer of knowledge uh, and intergenerational wealth. So those are the sort of the four concepts that I'm bringing to the work that we are doing and why I see it as, as important. Um, because again, being a bean counter, what gets measured gets done, I usually find. So how do we make sure that we have the right mindset in setting a reporting framework that looks at things in a holistic manner? And so those are some of the suggestions and thoughts that I'm bringing to the table. I don't have all the answers yet, we're on a bit of a journey. But on my closing comments and I have five. First one is, I think every generation has an intent. What is ours? And what are we willing to give up? Because again, if I think about our tupuna, every generation of our tupuna made a sacrifice for the future generations. What is ours? Second one is, I call it elemental harmony. How are we creating harmony around all those dis different spheres in our world? Because we are, it is all interdependent. And I think Mother Nature's just giving us a subtle reminder, maybe not so subtle now, around the importance of we live in you know, Papa Tuanuku Ranginui's realm. We don't live separate from it. So how are we creating elemental harmony? Um, also, just as a side note, you know, why, you know, if we think about our mental health statistics, that to me is also part of the elemental harmony. People aren't good hinenaro wise, they won't be good tinana wise, therefore they may not be making the best decisions. Six, uh, third one is multi dimensional purpose, which I've already touched on. Intergenerational and interconnected impact would be my fourth, and last thing is legacy the importance of creating whakapapa. So just to close out, um, and this is something I came up with last night, is success should not be confirmed by those who hold the pen, but by those who will live the experience. And so that's my warning to all of us, while we may be holding the pen today, it is our mokopuna and tamariki who will live the experience. So I look forward to their assessment on whether or not we're successful, because, you know, in Māori world, we will see them again in the wairua space where they will tell us their thoughts. So, nō reira, a tēnei te mihi ki a koutou, a tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, kura mai tātou.